Hi everyone, Dr. Arland Hill out at Harvest Hills Ranch here today. And we often get questions about our grass-fed beef and does it actually make a difference? And so one of the things I thought I would tackle today is one of the bigger topics that comes up with grass-fed beef and that's going to be the different fats, the fatty acids, if you will, that are in the beef and truly do these make a difference or not? And so first off, we have to appreciate the difference between grass-fed and not grass-fed fed and there's this really comes down to two types of fats what we call the omega-3s a lot of most of us know about omega-3s a lot of people hear about omega-3s with fish oils but other meats can have omega-3s in them if they consume their natural forage now you can also on the opposite side of that for animals that are not eating their natural forage that's where you're going to have a higher composition of omega-6s. And these omega-6s are the ones that we often associate as being inflammatory and being associated with disease. So here's the difference. If we're looking at these animals and they're consuming grass as their natural forage, what you're going to see is that this grass that they're eating on, this grass has omega-3s in it. So as they consume the grass, and there's other, there's other fats, beneficial fats in here too, like some omega-9s, but as they consume these grasses, those omega-3s get incorporated into the meats. And then in turn, when we ingest those meats, we get those omega-3 benefits. Now, let's walk over here and look at these guys a little closer because we, what we want to do is appreciate what they're eating and contrast that to what they're doing and what is, what is the conventional model, if you will. Conventional model is going to be feeding these animals grains. And so grains, corn, I'll use as the example, is very high in omega-6. And specifically, it's going to be higher in something called linoleic acid. Now, linoleic acid when when we in when these animals ingest that it not these specifically but when cows ingest that that converts over to arachidonic acid now arachidonic acid is where the problems begin because when we start thinking about an inflammatory fat arachidonic acid is our inflammatory fat so if we want to avoid that, then we shouldn't be eating animals that are having a higher concentration of arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid, as I mentioned, creates inflammation. And so inherently, and this is a subtlety point that I feel like often gets overlooked that I do want to draw out. Do these animals have arachidonic acid? Yes, they're mammals. We as humans produce arachidonic acid. Animals have that inherently as a natu natural byproduct of their fat metabolism. It is produced. The idea is that we don't want a, a we don't want above a certain level of arachidonic acid. And so, therefore, if we consume meat from animals that are not as high in arachidonic acid, naturally we don't end up with as high of arachidonic acid either. So. Does it make a difference? Well, it does make a difference if you care about the differences in your omega-3s and your omega-6s. Or maybe stated a little differently, if you care about the difference between controlling your inflammation and not controlling inflammation. And just as a maybe a closing point, why is inflammation so important? Well, inflammation's been implicated in almost every chronic disease that you can think of. Cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative conditions. So if you're interested in trying to offset these, then you should be interested in the difference between conventional and grass-fed. And in that case, it does make a difference. So I hope you enjoy the information. I hope you'll take the time to share this with someone. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with someone out there. And make sure you subscribe as we're going to bring you more and more information about the difference and why raising animals under certain standards that mimics their natural environment really does make a difference for them and for you. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Arland Hill.